We are live. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Where is my Shabby? There's my Shabby. And where is my co host? There's my co host. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Jake here again. It's a Friday, March 8, 2019. Okay, so today the gospel is going to be from St. Matthew, chapter 9, verses 14 15. It's a short gospel, okay? And it's a gospel that's not very easy to understand, but we will try to explain it. Okay, our Lord uh, talks to us about fasting here, okay? So he says, The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we? And the Pharisees fast much. But your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guest mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Okay, so what's the significance of this gospel um, today? And what does that mean? very short gospel really mean for all of us okay there has to be a little bit of a historical explanation to this okay because the disciples of John who's John who was the John referred to here John the Baptist right John the Baptist they approach Jesus so John the Baptist are you know and his disciples are friends of Jesus right because they are uh, remember that other gospel where the 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 apostles were complaining and saying, oh, you know, we stopped them from uh, evangelizing because they're not one of us, right? And then Jesus said, no, uh, those who are not against you are for you, right? So don't stop them. So John the Baptist had his own disciples who were doing more or less uh, uh, the same work of following uh, our Lord, but uh, through the perspective of St. John the Baptist. Okay? So they had their own practices. And one of those was, uh, practices of penance and fasting because it was customary for the Jews to be fasting they uh, but they just had different traditions so the Pharisees for example the Pharisees uh, had a tradition of fasting that was part of their religious practices but and they fasted twice a week twice in a week on Mondays and Thursdays okay? two days in a week now, John the Baptist, in order to distinguish his own disciples from the Pharisees, he also recommended that they fast, but he changed the days. He made them fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. And that is where more or less we get the tradition from our own Catholic tradition. Now, we trace that fasting on Ash Wednesday and on Good Friday, you know, uh, and the abstinence that we also do uh, on Fridays from the tradition that John the Baptist had established for his own disciples. So here were his own disciples, St. John's disciples, asking our Lord, you know, why do we fast and your own disciples don't? Now our Lord said, well, when the, bride, the bridegroom is present, we don't normally fast, right? So what is that bridegroom image there? So, okay, while fasting is very much part of the culture of the Jews, and by the way, why do they fast? They fast for penance. Yes, they fast for penance. See, they fast in order to express sorrow for their own sins, in order to purify themselves, purify themselves not only spiritually, but also bodily, physically. To them, that is their way of purification in order to atone for their own sins and to better prepare for the coming of the Lord. Remember, the Jews... The Jewish people were the chosen people of God, right? And they were appointed as the chosen people of God. And it was through them that God was going to come to earth. Okay? And so they had all of that in mind. And they were preparing perpetually. Up to now, they're still preparing for the coming of Jesus. They missed the occasion. Yeah. They, they didn't regard Jesus as the, as the Messiah. So they're still looking and waiting and preparing. So that is why they continue fasting. And fasting is their way of preparing. What's going on? <laughs> prepare, uh, part of their life was to prepare for the coming of the Messiah and purifying themselves. Okay? That is why fasting is very much part of their uh, religious culture. 
Okay, but then, well, Jesus already came, right? And by, 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 by making the association that if the bridegroom is in a wedding feast, you don't fast, right? You don't fast. You, in fact, are feasting. You, in fact, are eating and, you know, uh, having wine and having all sorts of good food, right? Because you are <coughs> feasting for the presence of the bridegroom among, among you. So, here in this statement, our Lord, our Lord makes reference to himself as being the bridegroom. Now, who is the bride? The church. The church. Very good, Joseph, right? So, he is the bridegroom and his spouse <coughs> is the church. And the church means who? All of us. All of us. We are the church, right? We are the spouse of Christ, the body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ, which is the church. So that is the, the theological connection there that he makes. But of course, during that time, they did not understand. Well, why are you a bridegroom now? And, you know, what's the connection? Okay. But, uh, but as our Lord promised, well, you understand more things when the Holy Spirit comes, right? So I suppose this this story had more clarification. Well, after the Holy Spirit enlightened the, the apostles, yes, honey, it made them realize that that was what he meant by that bridegroom uh, image. Okay? So, when the bridegroom is present, the Jews do not fast. Now, what is the relevance of this in our present day? Okay? Why do we still fast? Well, because fasting is still is still uh, the the recommended means towards spiritual purification okay for our own atonement the atonement for our own sins and the sins of the entire world right so uh, that is why we still mortify ourselves we we do sacrifices and we uh, we fast literally fast right and when are our days of fast again Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Okay. Now, um, so fasting is uh, very much part of our Catholic culture, our Catholic practice in order to atone for our own sins. Now, but for you, for you little ones, <laughs> you don't fast yet. Okay. And uh, 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 so what kind of a fasting, what kind of a sacrifice can you do? Right? And by the way, uh, fasting here is, of course, the, uh, the big word. Right? It encompasses everything else that relates to sacrifice and mortification. So while uh, during Lent we are only uh, uh, encouraged to fast twice this whole season, doesn't mean to say that that's the only mortification or big sacrifice that we can offer. Um, we can always fast from other things. Okay? And what do we do when we fast? What is fasting all about? What is the connotation of fasting? Go we to deprive oneself voluntarily, depriving oneself of good things, right? Good things. We deprive ourselves of good things as a way precisely of making atonement we 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 push away these good things we deprive ourselves in order to uh, focus on god in order to help us clear our minds clear our hearts clear our bodies from attachments to these very good things as a way of purifying ourselves of any attachment to material things, to people, to things we do, to gadgets, to anything else that might attach us to the things of this world and detach us from God. Okay? So meaning that, hey honey, there's your milk. <laughs> meaning that uh, when we talk about fasting, we have to expand that, the definition of the term. It's not only about fasting from food, but we can fast and deprive ourselves and mortify ourselves from many other things. Like what things can we recommend that we fast from? Any ideas? What things can we fast from, you think? 
what can we deprive ourselves of? As a, as a what mortification was that? Candies. candies. Okay. <laughs> we can fast from candies. Those of you who don't fast from uh, uh, big meals yet, yeah, kids can fast from candies, chocolates, or sweets and things that you like, right? What else? What's that? Facebook, yes. In fact, plenty of people fast from Facebook. Plenty of my friends have said goodbye for the rest of Lent and uh, they're going to fast from Facebook. Yeah, well, it's not one of my mortifications this time <laughs> because we're doing these kinds of things. We're posting these reminders for Lent. What else can people fast from? Huh? Yeah, food, of course. Yeah, food, shall we? Food, what else? Well... Huh? Gadgets, of course, gadgets. You can mortify yourselves from gadgets, right? Instead of having your phones all the time and uh, looking at everything there, you know, from YouTube videos to whatever. Well, you can you can focus on. Okay, wait a minute. Maybe I'll use my gadgets only for, let's say, studying or getting the news or whatever information you need, right? Instead of entertainment. So some people fast from watching TV. Some people fast from watching movies. Some people fast from looking at the mirror. <laughs> yeah, see? Some people cannot help it. They look at the mirror all the time and see how, how groomed, well-groomed they are and how handsome or beautiful they are. Those are things you can fast from. Okay? What else? Now, fasting, by the way, does not only mean also depriving ourselves and, <coughs> and pushing away uh, 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 things from us. It can also mean putting on things that we don't normally uh, do or it's hard for us to do. For example, the simple thing of putting on a smile. It's hard for some people. So those who have a difficulty smiling at others can fast from their frowning, <laughs> can fast from their normally gloomy countenance and start putting on a smile, right? We can also fast from thinking too much about ourselves. And therefore, the opposite would mean going out of our comfort zone, going out of our way to, to serve others, to help other people, right? To help other people. It can also mean fasting from our uh, what the, the usual chair where we sit on all the time because that's my position that's my comfort zone that is where I'm comfy sitting on I will fast from that right so we can do that we can do that or I'm gonna fast from uh, wearing my most comfortable uh, pair of shoes oh I, I like my uh, my Nike so much or my uh, whatever shoes I'm gonna fast from that and I'm going to, once in a while, I'm going to wear the other pairs that I don't really like so much in the first place. Why do you have too many pairs of shoes? <laughs> yes, Shabby. School. Huh? Fast from school? <laughs> no, you don't fast from school. <laughs> Rather, maybe you fast from your laziness and you do more school. You do your school fast. <laughs> there you go. You don't fast from school. You do your school work fast. Okay. So those are the little... Little things that we can recommend we do during the time of Lent, right? We don't need to flagellate ourselves or crucify ourselves on the cross. The many little things of everyday life are precisely harder to fast from. You might think it's very small, but the truth of the matter is they could be actually more painful to do. More painful to do. But those are precisely the things that... Uh, we would recommend we concentrate on. And that will really show our sincerity uh, in atoning for our sins, our sincerity in making reparation for the many sins that we have committed and the sins of everybody else. And that way we can go through Lent in a beautiful, cheerful manner. Having the end in view, right? Having the end in view all the time, which, which was what we were talking about yesterday. And what is that end in view? Heaven. Heaven. The resurrection. At the end of the uh, crucifixion of our Lord, the resurrection. Heaven. The reward. We look forward to that reward. <laughs> right? Out of love for God. Out of 
a sincere uh, uh, desire to be with God forever in heaven. But we need to purify ourselves. We need to help ourselves, right? And uh, by not only fasting from food, but fasting from many other things that we can fast from. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Huh? That's it for us. Have a good weekend, everybody. Um, today's Friday here, so tomorrow we will rest from these, uh, uh, from our commentaries. Or we'll see. Maybe we'll add one tomorrow. We'll see. Anyway, have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye.